I'm not a guy that goes out in the public a lot. You know, I'm not a guy that shows my face. After 30 years of being open, I still get at least once again, again oh, are you the new guy? I've never seen you here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, oh, I spend way too much time in my office. <laughs> Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Here we are with part two of my week-long feature interview with Skip Hermans of Skip's Records and CD World. I hope you've been enjoying the interview so far because there's much more to come. Now if you missed part one, please do check it out as he talks about his long and winding road to opening his own store, as well as how meaningful his past and present employees and his customers are to him. Now before we get to this part of the interview, I must say I forgot to ask him about his name. I've been friends with him for so long, and the store's been such a fixture in my life and in the community that the irony and hilarity in the notion of a record store being owned by a guy named Skip totally escapes me anymore. I mean, it's like, when you buy records, the one thing you don't want them to do is Skip. Anyway, in this video, Skip talks about the innovative and philanthropic spin he puts on Record Store Day every year the various other charitable and community outreach events he's established through the store, some of which have caught on and gone nationwide, as well as a very special remembrance of a significant member of the store's family and the lasting impact he made on the store and the man behind it. So please do sit back and enjoy part two of my interview with Skip Hermans. If I had my own personal way of what I did every day, I would never sit at this desk. I'd be down there on the floor talking to music about people. I mean, music really excites me. When I hear something new that I like, I got to tell everybody I know. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're all like that. It doesn't happen a whole lot. Something that really, really turns me on or really changes my life. I remember when I first heard the REM EP, Gardening at Night. It was an amazing new sound that I'd never heard before, and at the same time it pissed me off because it was only a five song EP. <laughs> How could they only give me five songs? I want at least 10 or 12. Yeah, I can't, No. for some reason I just can't get into EPs. I ignore them and I wait for the full. Well, you know, sometimes that's all a band has, so they put it out, but, True. you know, I mean, there's been a lot of EPs, you don't see them much anymore, but they're actually starting to come back now because a lot of bands don't want to do a full record and spend the full time in the studio um, when they can put out an EP to see if it's actually going to sell or if it's going to fly. True. You know, and then add on to it later and only have to write four or five more songs and then they <laughs> add it on to the EP and now this is their new release. There you go. Okay. Okay, so uh, you just got, uh, well, <laughs> done with Record Store Day. Actually, you're still... Uh, I'm still working still on Record Store mailing Day. mailing out stuff, so... And uh, every Record Store Day, you do a promotion to benefit the uh, local animal shelters. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and some of the other special events you do for the community every year? Well, yeah, shelters. we started doing that. You know, <laughs> you know we have three dogs. We always have three dogs. <laughs> my wife, if we lived out on a farm, we'd have 15 dogs. My, lo my wife would pick up every stray dog possible. We're both animal lovers. Our entire family is animal lovers. Our son owns three dogs. Our daughter owns two dogs. Our other daughter owns a dog and two cats. You know, so when we get together, we have like nine dogs in the family, you know, and stuff. And, and so I always wanted to do something for the local Humane Society. And so I think it was maybe six years ago or seven years ago when we started doing this. Because Record Store Day is first come, first serve. Right. Okay? And you can only buy one copy of each thing. Uh, it keeps the eBay flippers down, you know, and stuff. And so we thought, what if we let somebody in early? Okay, what if we did a contest? You bring in anything for the local animal shelters, whether it's a can of cat food, a, a stuffed toy, a leash, a collar, something that we can turn around and donate. For every one thing you bring in, we give you an entry blank. So if you bring in 72 things, you get 72 entry blanks. <laughs> we pick one name at 15 minutes before we open out of a hat of all those entry blanks, and then that person gets in 10 minutes before everybody else. Nice. The first time we did it, there was a, a local guy named Jimmy Singleton here. Yeah, Jimmy, I'm going to give you a shout out. The parlor, tattoo parlor downtown. <laughs> um, great guy, great customer. He won. And 
it was hilarious. I wish we would have videotaped it. But he came in and he's like, he just didn't know where to turn. You know the scene when John Belushi's coming down the stairs in Animal House? Mm -hmm. He's just like that. And we're dying laughing at him. And he's just like grabbing stuff. And I think in less than 10 minutes, he had $600 worth of stuff in his hand. Good yeah. lord. Yeah. And he was tickled pink. And, um, and actually, it was like three years later, he won again. He's our only two time winner of that. He came in and he brought like 48 or 56 cans of cat food. Oh, wow. Okay, so we just gave him some pads, and I said, all you have to do, just write Jimmy S. on it, we'll know who it is. And he pulls out this endorsement stamp, and he says, <laughs> no, I got my stamp, and so he just starts stamping <laughs> stuff. He was and, prepared. Yeah, he was prepared. So, um, And he was one of the guys that was still out there at 6 o'clock at night on Friday night, <laughs> waiting 14 hours before he could even get in the door. You know, we open at 8 o'clock, but they start getting here at 6 o'clock the night before. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, we had four people. Overnight campers. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I got here at 3.30 in the morning, there was like 60 people already in line. Mm -hmm. By the time we opened, there was like 280. It was all the way in the back of the building by the dumpster and stuff. So <laughs> um, it took us almost three hours to get everybody in. Because you can't just open the doors and let everybody in. It, people would trample. Yeah. yeah. You got yeah. some loyal customers, I tell you. Well, there, there's some stuff that, you, you know, especially when you get, you order 10 of something and you get one of them or two of them or something like that. And it's unfortunate because somebody says, you open at 8, I'll be there early about 7.30. It's like, you're going to be at the back of the line, I hate to tell you, but, you know, eventually you're going to get in. So there is two or three other record stores in the country that have picked up on that and have done it for their local animal shelters and stuff too. Nice. Um, um, every year we take at least a huge carload of stuff to the three shelters here in town. Nice. You know, I'll bet they love um, that. And, and uh, they're very appreciative of it and stuff and they always say, you know, we'll say, how much of a donation slip do you need? I said, I don't want anything. I said, it's just our pleasure to do it. So. There was another uh, thing that you do for like the Whitaker family dinner? Is, is oh yeah, we do a uh, uh, Whitaker dinner um, that's on Thanksgiving every year. Um, I forget about these things. I'm glad you remember them. <laughs> um, a couple weeks before we have a store-wide sale and we give 5% of our, our gross earnings for the entire sale mm -hmm. uh, for those four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We usually take like 20% off everything and then we give them 5% of all the gross income for nice. that. Um, I've been told by one of the people that run it, it's like 15% of their budget every year. That's pretty So good. it's helpful, Yeah. you know, and it means a lot to me. I hate seeing people hungry, yeah. you know, so um, anyway, we can help out with that. Uh, we've donated a lot of money to Women's Space over the years. Nice. Um, we make a lot of donations to I get asked for donations all the time we try to we we try as hard as we can to give everybody something even if it's just like a 15 or a 20 dollar gift certificate or something like that we try um, we can't always give everybody everything but um, you know it's it's important to me to keep my name out there like that you know we've done other things I've always wanted to put together a children's Sunday here where we have a local children's artist come in and just play for kids on our stage. And, yeah, you were talking about and, that in, a, I think it was a newspaper interview. That yeah, was. and, and I've still never gotten around to actually putting it together and stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it's just one of those things on my plate that eventually I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, we're, in, we're, we're sort of involved in the kids rock thing here in town. The lady who runs that is amazing, and we're going to meet here soon. Uh, we have kids rock shows here in May. Uh, the last weekend in May, the kids rocks it. You have to be, I think it's like 16 and under. And we're going to try to put some an eight, uh, monthly thing with kids rock here or something, nice. you know, because um, these kids, you know, I mean, they're really talented, but you can't go play in a bar until you're 21. Yeah, you know, and it's sort of time tough to find places some to play. To them, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, and of course, our famous duck football promotion. Oh which there's at least 10 or 12 stores across the country that do the same thing with their college team. Nice. You know, Waterloo does it with Austin with the University of Texas. Uh, Record Exchange in Boise does it with Boise State. Uh, Oz Music in Tuscaloosa does it with Alabama. That was just a stupid idea that I came up with one time when we were pl playing Oregon State. And 
said, Bill, let's give away the used after if we'll see <laughs> how much they beat Oregon State by and we'll discount it by that. Well, they beat Oregon State by 42 points. <laughs> like, we got murdered the next day. Um, so, and, so are you the store that started that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Oh, yeah. We were the ones that came up with it. And we only did it, and then the next year we didn't do it, we just did it for Civil War. And the Ducks lost that one, okay? So there was no sale. So I said, let's just do every damn game. And so it became known all over the place that we'll, we made music fans become football fans because they were paying attention to the game. Yeah. <laughs> and we made football fans music fans. We would get calls from people in the third quarter from Watson Stadium saying, Hey, we're up by 52. Are you still doing that stupid sale? Yeah, we're doing that stupid sale. Well, about four years ago, five years ago, something like that, we had to cap it at 40%. <laughs> Because we beat Washington State one time by 64. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I didn't want to open that day. I didn't want to open that money. day. Yeah. Oh, we lost a lot of money that day. <laughs> we made a lot of happy people, though. We made a lot of happy customers. <laughs> but uh, So we had to cap it at 40, which is still a huge discount. It is, yeah. 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 And we only do it the very the day after. 99% of the time they play on Saturday, so it's on a Sunday. If they play on a Friday night or a Thursday, we do it the following day. So there's only really one other thing that I wanted to ask you. It's it's a really neat story that you've told me before, and I just kind of wanted to maybe just uh -oh. help to keep. His, <laughs> oh no, it's nothing bad. It's kind of to, to help keep his memory alive and stuff. It's about your website and oh, uh, the Corey. Man who designed it, Corey Ampens. Corey, now you're going to make me get all misty eyed. If, if you're up to, um, to tell yeah. him, yeah. Corey Ampens was a kid. And if any of you know who Corey was, you know how much of a great guy he was and how damn smart he was. When I first opened down the street, of course, we didn't have a computer or anything. Uh, you still wrote stuff down on a piece of paper and did your reorders that way and stuff. And somebody introduced me to a guy that can com computerize my store to make it a lot easier. And uh, this guy got me all set up on our computer system introduced me to Corey and said this kid is a little genius when it comes to computers the problem is he's a sophomore in high school <laughs> and he's really into he plays banjo he plays guitar he has his own recording studio I mean this is while he was a sophomore in high school now wow. I mean very very intelligent kid so I met Corey I ended up hiring Corey as a clerk and Corey helped me get computerized, but he never really said much for the first year, first 18 months about that he knew a lot about computers and stuff, because he didn't want to step on this Gerald's feet, this other guy that had helped me get started, you know, and stuff. And we had picked out a software program that called Musicware that ran our point of sale and stuff. And one day Corey said to me, he says, you know, I can write a program a lot better than this. This is a piece of crap. Corey began working on it, and it was probably six months or eight months, nine months down the road that we first started to beta test it. So Corey became my right-hand man, uh, wrote this program. We ran both systems side by side for about two months before we finally switched over to his system. The beauty about Corey was somebody would say, wow, it'd be cool if it could do this. Corey would say, buy me a pizza, give me 20 minutes. I'll have it working. <laughs> you know? And he did. And I don't know how many times I would get here at 4 o'clock in the morning and something would be screwed up and I'd call him and wake him out of a dead sleep <laughs> and say, this is what's going on. And it's like, press this, press that, do this. What happened? Okay, it's gone. Thanks. Bye. He'd come in at 10 o'clock and wouldn't remember even talking to me. But he could step me through how to fix this problem. That's kind of scary. <laughs> it's, he was scary. And after he left, when we had issues... I would call a computer place that fixes computers and stuff. And they must have had like six or seven programmers over here scratching their head going, I have no idea how he did this. We have receipt printers on our computers downstairs, but there's no printer drivers on them. He says, that's impossible. And, they, and I said, ring something up, it works. I said, I don't know how the hell he did it. Our UCDs have a unique barcode. So we have six copies of Springsteen's Born to Run. We have six unique barcodes for it. 
So everything is computerized in the entire store. Everything is in our system. Everything is simultaneously live on our website. I was going to say that was. He's that the was one that the, built uh, the website too. That, that yeah. real time inventory on the yeah. web store and the thing is that yeah. something he came up with? Yes. Yeah. So you can look on our website and say we have 31 copies of this in stock and you can look an hour later if two of them sold it says you have 29 of them you can actually put something in your shopping cart and if you get up to go to the bathroom and get up to make a sandwich and it sells in the store before you come and complete your purchase it's gone out of your shopping cart wow i've had people call me and say i put something in my cart and i came back two hours later and it's gone it's like what was it oh, well it sold at the store sorry wow that's fast i said no it's simultaneous he was one of the most intelligent computer people I know wow. and also one of the laziest son of a bitches I've ever met in my life <laughs> he could have made so much money off of this thing but he didn't want to write a program for it he didn't want to write a manual for it and he didn't want to support it he didn't want to take the questions he says I like what I'm doing just let me have my desk sat right over there for years he was my kid and unfortunately he came down with cancer got brain cancer and he was clean for four years and then it came back and he was gone pretty fast and that was almost 10 years ago wow. and Corey still looks out over me and I still talk to him in the morning when you know I'm here and pissed about something and I can't get something to work and I'll think what would he do and it's like I know what he would do he taught me so much about computers he was just a little genius and his dad and his mom still stay in touch you know He's a big part of why we're here too. And like I said, it's a, it's a crying shame that he's gone and he's not with us anymore, but uh, his legend lives on, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking your time to... Not gonna ask me how it's gonna end? How it's gonna end? The store. How it's gonna end? Oh, okay, yeah. Do you know how it's gonna no, end? No, I have no idea. I was just wondering <laughs> if you were gonna ask it. <laughs> Well, I, I am getting closer and closer to retirement, but you know, I mean, my wife and I have pondered this for four or five years now, but my employees mean the world to me, and if I close this store, I put them out of work, and I don't want to do that, you know. And I still enjoy coming here. I mean, it's not, it's not nearly as fun as it used to be, mm -hmm. you know. But corporate crap. It, it's well, the record labels just dealing oh, yeah. with them. You know, um, they don't want us around. They just want to stream music. They don't want manufacturing. They don't want shipping. They don't want, you know, labor. They don't want any of that. They just want to stream music and make tons of money and pay artists nothing. And people still want physical goods. So when vinyl made a comeback, it pissed the labels off, <laughs> and they wouldn't invest any money in it at all. It's all other individuals that are out there opening pressing plants and stuff. It's not the record labels. They don't want to invest any money at all in it. It's just crazy to me. I know. Well, that's the record labels mentality. So, you know, I could mention a lot of names, but I'll save that for my book. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm counting on you eventually putting out. I'll, you know, I'll put it out, but I, I, I'm not, I can't put it out until I'm gone so people can't find me. Because <laughs> I'm going to probably piss some people off. But... Um, Tom and I have talked about this before that I am writing a book I have been writing a book for some time over the years and mainly it's about not just the record industry but about stupid things that I've heard in the record store mm -hmm. you know I've read our articles online about uh, stupid questions customers ask yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> you know the lady that where's your Christian section it's right over here she comes back she, you don't have shit for Amy Grant <laughs> Really? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I was going to ask you. I forgot was uh, any. Can you name off the top of your head the craziest customer encounter you've ever had? Boy, that's a tough one. Probably when the guy that brought a bunch of stolen CDs in here, and the guy who had them stolen had contacted the local stores, and so I called him, and we were detaining the guy sort of going through his CDs slowly mm -hmm. and next thing we knew that there was three cops inside with guns drawn and he was in the back of the store trying to break out the fire escape trying to <laughs> break out the fire accident <laughs> and um, that was pretty wild how about the sweetest or most beautiful customer encounter you've ever had 
Well, we had a customer named William Pfeiffer that shopped here for years and years and years. And William was a gem. He was a psych professor at the University of Oregon. And he would come in every Sunday in his suit and tennis shoes <laughs> and go to the classical section and buy $100 worth of stuff. And then he'd go visit his wife's grave. And then he'd go out to lunch, go to church and go out to lunch. And then he'd come back in the afternoon and buy a couple hundred dollars more worth of stuff. He was a hoarder of music. And William passed away three years ago. And his son came to me and said, you know my dad, he shopped here all the time. And I didn't know he had passed away, obviously. And I said, oh my gosh, he was such a sweet man. And, and you know, he always bought classical music and opera and sometimes jazz and sometimes maybe some easy listening stuff and things like that. But you'd see him over there in the classical section and we'd have the cure on and he'd be dancing to the cure <laughs> you know he'd be bopping around over there he was such a just a happy fellow so ian and i went and met his son at his house and ian goes oh my god look at and he picks up this eight and a half by eleven frame picture of william and frank zappa when frank zappa <laughs> played the u of o he wanted to meet with the psych professor who happened be William at the time. They went to lunch, they had this that picture together. Yeah. I said, I told his son, I said, man, can I have that picture? I said, I'll pay you money for the picture. I said, that is great. And he said, no, that's mine. He says, that's the one thing I'm keeping in my dad's. You know. <laughs> we hauled seven car loads of stuff in my Yukon out of there. 22,000 classical and opera CDs. Probably four or 5,000 of them never even been opened before. And we still have probably <laughs> 10 or 12,000 of them. We, and we found out later that he did that he had this much in, in Nebraska before he moved here. And his wife made him sell it all. And then his wife passed away and he accumulated all this in less than six years. Wow. But uh, he was just the sweetest customer. And when we lost him, that hurt everybody because everybody loved William. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he knew everybody by name and everybody knew him. And when I posted on uh, something on social media that William had passed away. We even had old employees that chimed in and said, oh my God, he was my favorite customer. And then showed us pictures of him with them, you know, and stuff. And so Skip, I want to thank you so much for taking your time. I know you're a busy guy. And as proof that I was actually here during the interview, <laughs> I couldn't find a place to put the camera without me being in the shot. So, but yeah, thank you so much for your yeah, time. Yeah, sure. This is no problem. It'll be interesting to see the finished product. Thanks, Tom. That oh, was you're welcome. Uh, and yeah, if you're enjoy. ever in Eugene or the Oregon area, Skips Records and CD World, Eugene. Stop here. It's a great store. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have part two of my interview with Skip Hermans. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And again, a big thank you to Skip for taking the time out of his busy schedule to make this happen. Please stick around for the bonus part of this feature coming up in just a couple of days, which features a whole bunch of outtakes from the interview, including fascinating inside secrets about Record Store Day, more about how he fosters a feeling of family amongst his store staff, hilarious and heartwarming stories about the late Corey Empens, and some of his favorite artists and albums of the past and present. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers' channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.